This is our monthly community meeting on the third Tuesday of each month. We have a number of updates to share with the community. And as always, at the end of our presentation section of the call, we will open things up for questions, comments, input from those participating in today's call. Our agenda today begins with a set of updates on foundation activities. We will also provide an update on planning around the Michael J. Fox Datathon that is being organized in partnership with the foundation. We'll talk a bit about a bug fixathon that is being planned for 2015. We will have updates from our co-leads of the 3C committee and working groups. We'll have an update on eTrix, and Rudy will round out uh, the presentation part of uh, our call today with a review of activities scheduled for calendar year 2015. So with that, I'd like to turn things over to Keith to walk us through uh, foundation updates for the month of December. Keith? Thanks, Kevin. I'm going to hit the next slide. There we go. So uh, I just wanted to uh, say thanks to everyone for, for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pretty busy month uh, at the Foundation. Um, I'll remind people our fiscal year is uh, July to June, so this isn't a, a financial year end for us, but I think with the year end uh, coming up, there's been a lot of work to, to make sure that we've got everything uh, cleaned up and clean and neat for going into the new year. I'd like to thank the, the team and people that have been helping with that along the way. Uh, so I can just like to wish everyone a happy holidays. Uh, the holiday season is amongst us, so we won't actually get a chance to speak with you as a group again until the new year. So I wanted to make sure we wish everyone a very happy holiday season and, and a wonderful new year. In terms of the foundation, a couple of key things that we're focusing on, uh, and other than going through detail of what, uh, what you'll hear in the rest of the agenda, I wanted to update people on the, on the membership campaign. Uh, so uh, the membership campaign, again, the foundation is a member-driven organization. Uh, the bulk of our revenues come from membership fees. Uh, we're working on renewals and new memberships. Uh, we currently have uh, two, two gold members that have uh, committed to their renewal for next year. If you are um, uh, from a gold member company um, and your renewal date is coming up, you should, number one, be receiving an email from us. We have an email that goes out to people uh, 90 days ahead to remind people that their renewal is coming up. And then uh, secondly, um, you know, it, it's important for us to, uh, to get a confirmation from you that you'll be renewing as we go forward just to make sure that we can uh, stay on top of our budgets and, and our financial planning from that perspective. Second thing I'd like to emphasize is new memberships. Um, it's very important to the foundation and to the community at large that we grow the membership. Um, we have a number of groups that have expressed some interest uh, in joining the foundation that we're pursuing, uh, but I ask each and every one of you out there um, if you have, uh, if you're from a company that's not a member, please, you know, contact Kevin or me, and we can help you work through the process of becoming a member. Uh, or if you, you know, a colleague that's working in the space, uh, I would love to, to have you encourage them to, to become members and to participate in a lot of the member-driven activities that we have. Some of which uh, the the group will be going through in terms of the three C committees and, and the activities that are ongoing there as well. So the membership campaign is in full swing. Um, we'll be updating you uh, monthly as we go along. And uh, I look for as much help as we can out there in, in bringing new members uh, into the fold and, and growing the community. You know, the more people we have here, the more critical mass we have, I think the, the better things go. Uh, secondly, we have, uh, from a governance perspective, our board meets on a quarterly basis. Um, our next board meeting is set for January 20th. And this is uh, going to be a special board meeting for us. Uh, we will have uh, the 3C co-chairs, the people that you'll be hearing from today, will be presenting to the board of directors, and they'll be presenting on the activities of the 3C committees themselves and the various working groups that are, uh, are composed uh, there under. And in addition, they'll be bringing forward what they see as particular uh, strategic issues that the need board attention and board involvement. This is a key part of our governance program, bringing uh, members from the, the working groups into the 3C committees and the 3C committee co-chairs from the community, uh, presenting and entering into discussions at the board level so that we really can connect you know, governance all the way through to the actual operations and everything that we're doing. 
So that's a good key part of the meeting. I want to thank in advance uh, Jay and Sherry and Julie who will be making those presentations and, and engaging in those discussions. In addition, uh, we will be discussing a number of strategic issues um, at the board level. Uh, and what I'd encourage you to do is if you have a particular strategic issue that you think needs discussion there, uh, either bring that up through the 3C co-chairs and have that as part of their presentations from the code uh, community or content committees. Or you can bring it directly to me, and, and I'll work on it uh, with you from there. Uh, but um, uh, I'm looking forward to our, our meeting on the 20th, and, uh, and in the next meeting we'll be having after that will be in conjunction with BioIT World and be on site here in Boston. A uh, third piece of news, which I think is very exciting, is uh, uh, Genomics England, uh, which is a large $100,000 genome project that will be sequencing uh, genomes from 40,000 patients looking at uh, cancer genomes, tumor normal, as well as orphan diseases, um, has selected uh, Transmart as their, uh, their repository for this information and, and we're working with these data. That's very exciting. Uh, Dave Brown, who is, uh, was our key liaison and, and uh, partner at BP Global Services while he was there, um, is, is leading the charge on the informatics side at, at Genomics England. And uh, I'm very happy to be working with them, and you'll hear more about what we're doing with, the, with uh, Genomics England as things go forward. But it's a very exciting thing for us, and, and we're very happy to be working with Genomics England and, and Transmart. Uh, another key thing for us is um, I've, I've discovered that in the open source world that the, uh, uh, the thon suffix is equivalent in the molecular biology world to the ohm suffix. And what we're doing is having a number of key types of, of THON activities. Uh, we recently just finished the, uh, the hackathon with the, the Harvard group at I2D2, uh, where they worked on developing uh, an integration, a higher level integration with uh, the database between I2D2 and Transmart, particularly around the selection of uh, patient cohorts and patient consents, uh, bringing some of the schema and Transmart up to an equivalence with the I2D2 version 1.7. Very successful hackathon there, um, very successful uh, effort, uh, and we're now evaluating the best way to bring that into uh, the master branch and, and make things work going forward there. But uh, these are the kinds of things that we really like to bring forward in terms of bringing new functionality to the platform, and I would encourage those of you that are looking at developing uh, new technologies or, or new analytics in the platform you know, to, to get involved with the foundation and we can help facilitate uh, those hackathons. Uh, the second thing, uh, I think many of, of you have been uh, uh, certainly aware of this, and, and it's something that is, is the foundation is very much aware of as we go along, is uh, it's the backlog of bugs in the JIRA reporting system. Uh, and we'll go through and talk about this in more detail, but uh, I wanted to let everyone know that uh, the foundation is, is really committed to, to making version 1.2 a very stable and well-supported system with appropriate bug fixes and patches uh, released. And to further this and to reduce the backlog, oh, did I lose? Oh, there we go. And to further reduce the backlog uh, there is uh, we're going to have a, a three-month uh, series of sprints to do bug fixing. And uh, Kevin will take you through more detail on that. And then finally, our, our third athon activity that's ongoing is uh, the data thon that we're planning with Michael J. Fox Foundation, uh, working with the ADME and PPMI data sets. Uh, we're currently recruiting uh, data scientists. Um, uh, biologists, um, developers, uh, to work with this. This will be happening uh, in mid-March on the West Coast. Uh, we're still finalizing arrangements. Uh, but it'll be the first datathon for the foundation, and we're pretty excited to get people together to work in a collaborative way on a particular set of data resources. So uh, an exciting thing that's, uh, that's going on now. Uh, another key issue that I wanted to, to highlight for people is uh, what we're doing on the roadmap side. Um, one of the key things that we see uh, as necessary going forward is to have a, a, a really well-defined roadmap of functionality and capability, uh, feature sets, um, technologies that we want to incorporate into the platform uh, on a going forward basis. Uh, Kays Van Bako has been uh, terrific in the architecture working group and helping assemble uh, a group to uh, really in detail work out a number of the key issues around this and we're working on the on the community side uh, to define sets of requirements, but to bring these all together and have a well-defined roadmap going into 2015 uh, as we go forward. So uh, I think those of you that uh, are engaged in that, I appreciate your effort, and if you want to be engaged in that, you know, the, the way to be involved in that is through your uh, 3C uh, coding and community committees from the requirements and from a, 
an architecture perspective. But pretty exciting effort. Um, I want to thank Kays for, for standing up and, and being you know, a key leader in this and, and working with Jay and with EK and, and the rest of the team on that. Um, as I said, it's been a, a very busy month uh, at the Foundation. Uh, we expect um, a little bit of time off uh, at the end of the year here. I think people are planning between uh, uh, Christmas and New Year's to take a little bit of time. And then uh, really hitting the ground running in, in 2015. We have a lot of uh, a lot of work to do next year. Uh, we started off with I think a, a really terrific board meeting focused on strategic issues and moving us forward, and uh, bringing us uh, towards what will be the fiscal year end for the foundation at the end of June, and doing our strategic planning for fiscal year 2016, uh, which uh, is now in place going into uh, our third quarter and fourth quarter. So that's the, the quick update for the foundation. If you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, Kevin, let me turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Keith. So next up, we'll provide a brief update on planning around the Michael J. Fox Datathon. As Keith has already uh, mentioned, uh, we're actively working to plan this out. The tentative date that uh, we seem to be uh, keen, keen in on is the week of March 16th. That will be shortly before the BioIT World activities in April, and we hope coming out of the Datathon to be able to um, uh, provide updates to the community at large and incorporate that around our BioIT activities. The Datathon is being planned for a location on the West Coast. We are currently exploring uh, potential uh, host sites in San Diego, Los Angeles, or possibly San Francisco. And as I believe we've talked about um, on our previous calls, uh, the objectives uh, for the Datathon continue to be worked out, but currently they are focused on sort of three, three things. The first is to develop a uh, interface that is something that a naive end user scientist uh, is able to use to really navigate uh, Transmart, to navigate the data and the um, analytics that they would be interested in using to explore the data that would be made available uh, through the Michael J. Fox Foundation. The second objective for the, the Datathon is to really look at developing methods to identify biomarkers, genetic profile stratification. And um, as a third objective, we would really like to come out of this uh, Datathon and actually generate publishable scientific findings. So how do we do this? We bring together uh, a community of, of data scientists, translational scientists, as well as our bioinformatics and, and developer um, uh, collaborators from the Transmark community to, to pull this all together. So Michael J. Fox, as we have um, uh, communicated before, and Ken Kubota um, had um, shared uh, initially at the annual meeting in Ann Arbor, is that they are making ADNI and PPMI data available. And then through some of our planning activities, we are looking at other data sets. And if, if among you, those who are on the call, have, have other ideas, uh, we, we would um, very much be interested in, in your thoughts. But we're looking at geodata, biofine data, LERC2, and then we're also looking at uh, potentially working with Allen Brain Institute to maybe expose some of the data that might be available through their uh, organization. So uh, we have Ken Kubota from the Michael J. Fox Foundation that is part of the organizing committee, Keith and myself, Rudy, Brian Athey, Julie Bryant, Jay Bergeron, Ceremon Sharon from Thomson Reuters, and Axel from um, Imperial College Etrix are all involved in pulling together uh, the, the plan around the, this uh, datathon. So Keith, anything more that uh, you think would be appropriate to share with those on the call around the datathon? Well, I think you covered the, 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 the essence of things there very, very well, um, uh, Kevin. One of the things that, that I will point out is the downstreams of this is uh, I think that you know, this is our first datathon is, is really where we've wanted to bring the foundation in terms of collaborative science, not just collaborative development uh, of technology and whatnot, but really getting to collaborative science. 
uh, we'll be having the, the BioIT World Pre-Conference Workshop really focused on this collaborative approach to science. And uh, we're hoping to, to make a presentation of some of the key results from this um, also at the, uh, the 2015 uh, uh, meeting on, uh, I forget the exact title of it, it's uh, Neuroinformatics and Brain Health, I think it is, that uh, E.K. Go is one of the chairs of. of so it's, a, it's really a, a nice approach there. I would encourage people to get involved. We have a limited number of people that we're recruiting to this, um, between 10 and 15 uh, scientists. So we want a collection of basically one-third developers, one-third you know, sort of biostatisticians, one-third uh, expert biologists. And uh, I would encourage you, um, if you have an interest, to contact me or Kevin or Ken Kubota directly, and we'll integrate you into the process. But I think this is a really exciting uh, approach, and we expect to be doing a lot more of this in the future. Thank you, Keith. Moving on, uh, the the uh, bug fixathon that we're uh, looking to organize, as as Keith had mentioned earlier, we have hundreds of open issues reported in Jira around version 1.2. A lot of these open issues go back to the commuting community testing activities that uh, we we organized in the June July time frame and more issues that have been added since then that have been identified by different organizations that have been reported as part of their early deployments. And so what we're looking to do is, again, to have a very strong community-based activity to not only identify and fix code and data issues, but to, to actually get those fixed and then through uh, an appropriate process, which I'll talk more about in a moment, verify those fixes. And so uh, this will be modeled after what we view as a very successful June-July set of community testing activities. And this will be organized for mid-January through March 2015. And this will be organized around two-week sprints where um, a, a group of individuals will prioritize uh, what, what issues are addressed in each two-week sprint. The organizing committee to date for the Bug Fixathon are Keith, Peter Rice from Imperial College of London, Terry Weymouth, as well as myself. If you have a particular interest in getting involved in helping organize that, please reach out to any of the four of us and uh, we'll, we'll make sure to, to put you to work. The, the process that will follow will be an iterative process. We will follow a process where users demonstrate Transmart in action. So we want end users, scientists, bioinformaticians that are users of the platform to actually demonstrate the issues that they are encountering with version 1.2. We'll have a process then for recording those in JIRA and assigning them to volunteers to fix. And then those uh, bugs, uh, as they are fixed, will then be, ver again, verified by end users that, indeed, those, those code issues, those uh, data issues are, are fixed. And so this will be an iterative process organized around two-week sprints. And we really need, again, the community to step up as it did um, earlier this year uh, and to help out from a user, from a tester, from a developer point of view. So, again, I can't emphasize enough. It will be the community in, in the end that really makes this a, a successful activity. So, again, Keith, I'll um, ask you if you want to make uh, any comments about what we're looking to organize, but uh, we really are looking for a very strong participation from our community at large. No, I, I, I will add to that, Kevin. Uh, <clears throat> this, is, this effort is an outgrowth of feedback that we've gotten from the community um, and you know, our own analysis of, of what we're seeing um, you know, from the developers. But one of the things that's very clear is when we look through the, the JIRA system for bug reports, that uh, you know, the vast majority of bug reports are coming from you know, a small group of developers that are engaged in active development. Um, I know that there is a lot more effort going on there in terms of people finding bugs, um, even in working on fixing bugs that are happening in isolation. And what we're hoping to do with this bug fixathon is not only uh, really eat into the backlog of, of reported bugs, but to get people engaged in bug reporting and bug fixing and making sure that when 
you know, when this is happening is that people aren't fixing the same bug four and five different times. Uh, that we can get it fixed once, that fix can propagate to the rest of the community through our, our code governance and patching process, and uh, and that everyone who is, is working with the code base should be in a position to report bugs, and if they are fixing those bugs, to commit those in an appropriate way back to the GitHub so that they get incorporated into the next patch release. Uh, I would encourage people, if you have any questions about that or if you need access to the JIRA or any of those other pieces, uh, to get in talk, contact with Terry Weymouth. Um, you can just reach him at terry.weymouth at transmarkfoundation.org uh, and you know, work, with, work with us to, to make sure that we're getting your input into the system and that those uh, inputs are then brought into the patches and releases that we're, we're moving forward uh, as we go forward. So this is a, a really important thing. It's, it's us reaching out you know, based on what we've heard from the community, putting some process in place, recruiting some volunteers here. Again, this is an all-volunteer approach um, and then hoping to, to make sure the rest of the community gets involved and engaged. So you'll hear a lot more about this as we go along um, and, uh, and go for there. So I appreciate uh, everybody's involvement. Thanks, Tim. Moving on, we now will turn to our uh, 3C co-leads for committee and working group updates. And we'll start off with the code committee uh, momentarily. But uh, before we do that, uh, just as a reminder, as, as Keith had said at the beginning of the call, we have an upcoming Board of Directors uh, meeting uh, on January 20th of 2015. And our co-leads from the community, Jay Bergeron, Julie Bryant, and Sherry Cow, will be uh, presenting to the board. And their focus will be to provide updates around the mission, objectives, and membership of each committee and their associated working groups, but as or more importantly, they will also bring forward to the board issues that have been identified uh, by our community through participation in these uh, committees and working groups and engage in a discussion about a path forward and potentially resources needed uh, to, to address those issues. So again, there is an opportunity through foundation governance and these committees and working groups to get involved and to participate and volunteer and contribute to what is uh, in, in our mutual uh, best interest. So with that said, I'd like to turn things over to Jay Bergeron and uh, give him the opportunity to provide an update on the uh, code committee. Uh, thanks very much, Kevin. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do is, is turn this over to Terry Weymouth to talk about the uh, current updates. Uh, so Terry's the one who's who's doing doing the work here, managing it. He and Peter, and I think he's he should be the one to uh, hello uh, go through these. Hey Terry, you should be all set. Uh, okay, great. Um, so uh, the um, uh, we've been, as Keith mentioned, we've been steadily working on fixing bugs in Jira and. Not, perhaps not at the level that we were doing in June and July, but ongoing um, work is certainly being done. And um, we're, we've been trying to have uh, bug fix releases on a fairly regular basis. So in the last, um, um, bet between now and the last release, um, there have been a number of commits made that fixed various bugs, and uh, I'm I'm tr I'm stumbling because I'm actually doing this extemporaneously, looking at uh, the commits. Um, there have been some issues fixed with um, various uh, minor uh, cosmetic things with the interface. There has been some issues fixed with um, um, the advanced workflows, and um, I see some changes in terms of cleaning up code and stuff like that. So um, we're going to go ahead and do what I would consider to be a fairly minor bug up uh, bug patch release. Um, so there's this is not. If you're currently working on 1.2.2, I wouldn't recommend that you 
make the effort to switch to 1.2.3, but um, this procedure is what we follow every time we do a bug release. We create a separate branch for the release and label the, ver the versions in the code um, and push all the artifacts to Nexus so that if someone tries to build that release downstream, they'll be able to do that. Um, we create a WAR file that gets, um, and a link will get put up on the Transmire Foundation site, and ultimately we create a VM with that, with those changes incorporated. Uh, the VM probably won't get done before Christmas, but um, it'll be coming out shortly after. And um, all that process starts on the 17th. The WAR file generating Generating everything down to the point where you have the WAR file is, takes about half a day, so that will get done pretty quickly. Um, but pushing that out and creating the VMs might take a little bit longer. Did I, did I do okay there? Thank you, Terry. Yep. So, Jay, do you want to much, continue Terry. on? Anything I'll add is that... Sure, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so uh, thanks very much, uh, uh, Terry. The only thing I'll mention on the first set is these, these updates are what I consider part of the production management work stream, the working group. And as, as Keith had, had talked about before, we do need to have a process that's repeatable, consistent for dealing with these updates, and it's something that the production management group is used to tackle in the new year. So on, on the plan to do when Maybe we all get to catch our breath a little bit. All right, so moving on. So I, I'll complete this yeah, off. Uh, uh, Jay, sorry to interrupt, but sure. uh, let me just mention, um, Keith asked me to draft the document for the, for the process, the procedure, which I will be doing towards the end of the week, um, and get that out to you and he and Kevin and a few of the other major players and then for review. Um, we're moving in the direction of getting this more formalized. So. Excellent. Thank you, Chair. Yep. All right. So, uh, I've, actually, I'm going to finish this off uh, maybe a little different. The first thing I want to do before we get into um, the architecture slide is to talk a little bit, of, to give you a, a perspective, in this case the Pfizer perspective, uh, in terms of 1.2, and kind of introduce the architecture update from, uh, from our experience. So basically, we're deploying 1.2 currently. We have a planned deployment for first quarter 2015. Over the last month, we've done got um, over 100 test scripts. That and, and actually, Alexandra Papa, who may uh, may be on this call, who's joined Pfizer, um, who's also the project manager for the foundation for uh, the video and training. Uh, but she's gone through these these scripts, and honestly, we have most of the functionality that's important to us working within 1.2. And we've also done substantial comparisons of studies before in, in our 1.0 version and our 1.2 version. And things are actually looking pretty good uh, to date. So if people are concerned about moving to 1.2, just be aware that we are moving. We are committed to uh, Transmart, and we're committed to Transmart 1.2. And I'm hoping that this is a little bit of good news for anyone who's considering moving and, is, and it hasn't taken the first step. So we're not deployed yet, but we're we're still on track, and and we're happy to keep people updated as we go. Uh, we've developed a process for altering the database from 1.0 to 1.2, which is something that, to my knowledge, hasn't been done. So we're actually going to do our update uh, based on uh, you know alter statements, modifying our existing database rather than reloading all of the data. And uh, you know, for the most part, as I said, most of our functional tests have passed uh, with one obstacle in that that has to do with file representation on the analyze uh, hierarchy. But, uh, you know, things are, things are looking pretty good. So uh, early user feedback, uh, we've reached out to some of our key users, and uh, we think we will require some training and familiarization. So just the shift from 1.0 to 1.2 will, even though it's relatively lightweight for people who are used to working at the system, uh, I think for our users, we'll, we'll have to do some some ex explicit training to get them on, on the new system and being productive. Uh, the things we're deferring uh, that we're not testing is cross-study and uh, VCF and the, uh, the, the genome browser, mainly because we don't have the data ready to, 
uh, available that we can simply load in and, and move forward. And in terms of, we have immediate needs for 1.2. And, and honestly, we really are interested in using the API. We have just loaded a set of, a set of studies that have been harmonized together. And we want to be able to look at that data uh, in a consolidated fashion. Uh, with with cross-study not uh, being deferred, we really want to use the API to help us do this. And one of the first things we want to do in the new year is, is get the Spotfire connector. Uh, from Perkin Elmer and and see if we can use this productively against our 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 instance. And honestly, I have really high hopes for uh, you know for the the new API and what it can provide for us. Uh, go to the next slide, please. And then I'll end up with talking about the architecture. And in you know, Kays, I, I just love the way Kays. Uh, these these issues are from Kays and and um, uh, an email that he had written to myself and Keith and others. And I think he, he really loved the way he says that the current code base contains a lot of technical debt. So basically, we understand that we need to be put ourselves in a position where if we can address some of the issues within the core code base, doing that will grow the developer community and help people in terms of people who are actually deploying and developing uh, climb the learning curve in a much more efficient way. So they're, they're, you know, the, the benefits are clear. More developers and greater capabilities with developers focusing on adding features rather than worrying about how to make the, you know, how to update the core code to enable the features that they're, that they're interested in. And the initial proposal in terms of trying to, to address this issue mainly from an architectural perspective is to have a meeting uh, that uh, Keith has already described early in the first quarter uh, to plan this architecture 2.0. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the availability of the key developers. So uh, we've identified people from Etrix, from Trait, you know, Terry, of course. Uh, those developers who have put the most time and committed the most code will try to make the meeting available to those to those people and then include other developers as as, as those people are interested. But that's the way we're going to try to schedule the meeting, and it hasn't been scheduled yet, but we do want to have it you know, fairly quickly during 1Q 2015. And leading up in terms of preparation for that meeting, we're starting some virtual pre-meetings where we're getting on the phone, talking through some of these issues, and essentially trying to prepare ourselves for having uh, a really productive discussion when, we, when we're available to meet face-to-face -face in the new year. Uh, the next meeting of those, I believe, is either tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. And uh, again, it includes uh, a set of, of folks who are uh, actively engaged in, in developing the application. And certainly, if there are any others who are interested in and want to be a part of this, you can send me an email. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how we can get you involved. So I think I'm going to leave it there. And uh, I just uh, want to... Actually, you know what? I'll just leave it there and see if there are any questions. Thanks. Hi, AJ. This is Keith. Um, one quick question. I think the work you guys are doing in, in upgrading from 1.0 to 1.2 is an incredibly valuable experience. I know most of the work on 1.2 so far has been uh, new installs. Is that something that you'll be documenting and sharing with the community and some of the tools that you're using there? Yeah, we'd love to. And actually, I was talking to Sherry yesterday uh, before this meeting. and. Uh, what we're going to try to do in the short term, I'm going to ask Alex to put together some of the the issues that we that we faced and and have have kind of surmounted either through development ourselves or uh, through understanding uh, how best to use the system or use the interface in version 1.2 versus version 1.0. So we're happy to do that. I, I will say this though, um, we are really heads down internally trying to get this done. So Alex has been tire, tireless in doing this. Hugo Berube, who's our technical lead, has just been heads down. Uh, Ming Su, our DBA, Haiyan Zhang, uh, who, who does a lot of the ETL engineering for us and, and loading, have, have really been focused on trying to get this out the door. So until we can catch our breaths, when we feel comfortable that our instances are in place, it's updated, 
we'll probably not be in a position to share our experience in a formal way, but we certainly would, would love to do that. And um, honestly, I'm pretty proud of, uh, of the folks in our, in our group for honestly doing something a little different. Uh, we have quite a bit of data in Transmart, and it really made more sense for us to, uh, to update our current database. And I don't think anyone else yet has done that, at least no, no one that I'm aware of. And uh, I think there's some, maybe some really interesting nuggets there for folks who might be in the same position and uh, have not started down the path of, of upgrading to 1.2. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Okay, great, Jay. I think that yeah, thank uh, you. your experience there is going to be really valuable. And, and I, I certainly agree that you need to get it done before you tell us all about it. But yeah. when, when it's time, uh, we're all uh, we're, you know, very anxious to hear that. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue to move on, and I'd like to turn this over now to Sherry to walk us through updates on the goings-on around the community committee and its working group. Sherry? Uh, yes, thanks, Kevin. Um, so um, in terms of the community committee, I think since last, um, uh, last uh, uh, webinar, I, um, the overall um, the community goal is really engaging existing committee and grow the community um, at large. We since have um, scheduled a few um, uh, sub-working group meetings that um, um, that each working group meeting, uh, each working group lead ha actually has presented in, uh, in terms of their mission and goals and um, also set up uh, three to six months goals. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, um, so in terms of the use case working group, and uh, I'm not trying to um, go over everything, but um, really trying to give it a little bit of um, uh, update on a, a current activity. So in the working, uh, the, in the use case working group, um, is really working hard in terms of definition of, of use cases. So um, you know we're trying to um, the working group is trying to address um, um, you know what's a what's a good use case um, could be. So there's uh, there's um, they follow a set of guidelines and who is it um, is really user centric um, guidelines and um, um, if you go to the next slide um, there's actually uh, some examples of a use case so really um, a, a quick sort of a category in terms of what type of category it is uh, what type of use case it is what's the analysis goal what's the available data what are the methods that's used in for this particular use case so the, these sort of sets up the, the background um, of the use case. And um, if you go to the next slide, um, it also collects that um, um, what expected results coming from the, the Transmar interface. So this really gives the, the users a, a quick idea in terms of what they are trying to do, what, um, what kind of functionality they are using within Transmar, and what's expected results. Um, and and um, currently, um, the, the use case working group is, is um, I think, collecting about seven or eight use cases so far already, um, and uh, it's ongoing effort. <laughs> this is re really led by um, Dave Marburg, uh, working with, I think, Kristen Sweet and um, a number of others uh, from a couple of different organizations. The, the next slide, I think, Kevin, <coughs> is on the, the training material. This is really led thanks to um, Julie from Rancho, and, and um, uh, Julie is working with a, a few other people, including TR and, and, and Rudy, really, um, you know, really diligently. A number of training material actually is um, being uh, is being done already, prepared, and um, a, a, there's a quick uh, web link actually uh, that you can um, everybody can go to. This um, Rudy has updated. The, uh, the Transmart Foundation website for this uh, uh, for Transmart training uh, material altogether, um, and uh, including reference menu, cheat sheet, and training slides, there's video um, material as well. So if you go to the next slide, um, so if you you know everybody can click on the web link. This is a quick um, uh, screenshot in terms of what's um, included on the the, the web page so far. 
um, as I would have mentioned, the you know, training t tutorial programs, either the YouTube video, there's also electronic printable material. So I encourage everybody can go there. The, I think um, the material is still um, taking its time to, to be put it up there. But um, it, uh, this is a really consol consolidated resource that everybody can get to. And the next um, slide. Um, so, so this is um, the web page is really a, a part of component of the entire communication working group. Um, this is really led by uh, Rudy, and um, um, he highlighted a, a few other um, communication channels that we are using. So, um, press releases, and community webinar, um, a number of others, and I'm sure you are everybody's getting you know, um, um, getting emails or um, um, mail blasts or, or other um, ways of um, communication coming from the Transmart Foundation, and um, um, if you're not, please you know contact Rudy directly for for that to add you. Um, and um, what we what we are really needing right now is um, um, different content, which we will also highlight later as well. So the the infrastructure is really set and. Um, um, if anybody has uh, other ideas, please chip in. Um, next slide. Um, another working group is the, the 3C Liaison Working Group. So the goal of this 3C Liaison is to keep the 3C committee chairs aware of each other's ongoing activities. So there is a monthly meeting set um, for the co-chairs. Um, the, um, the, the, you know, to be uh, so set for everybody to be aware, but also to identify and coordinate these cross committee activities. Certain things that um, you know, a few questions currently surface um, are what what is the current state of 1.2? Um, I think um, you know Jay has really <coughs> already um, shared um, part of the Pfizer experiences with with everybody. There are a number of organizations are um, at different stage of. Um, you know, either testing 1.2 or um, um, using 1.2 almost at um, a um, semi-production um, state. So I think it will be great for the community to to learn from their experiences and um, to um, plan their own you know, um, strategy go forward accordingly. Um, uh, ongoing user support for the platform. This is really working with Terry's group and um, um, and um, you know. Be aware of the the bug fixing and maybe um, in, um, actually uh, translating that um, sort of what's going on in the bug fixing part um, um, to support user in terms of um, um, you know, maybe transforming it from more of a technical aspect to sort of you know what the user needs perspective and um, um, what the future functionalities. Um, um, you know how does the future functionalities get uh, get channeled into the foundation, and how can you know foundation um, um, prepare for for the what are the next needs are in the, in the community? So these are really the goals for for this um, working group. And um, what's ongoing right now is um, uh, we're trying to coordinate with user leads from um, active organizations that who are using 1.2 you know, very actively to. Um, to consolidate what their current, you know, uh, to to understand what their current development activities are, what their um, you know, current and, and near future needs. Um, so one part is um, so it's really um, looking at what's going on right now, what's um, um, to to help everybody to understand and plan accordingly, and also to um, to understand what their the, the new um, um, the near term. So that's that comes. That comes from the the product, um, the management uh, aspect. Um, that I listed a few organizations um, who are using currently uh, currently actively using 1.2. Um, you know, we are. This is um, 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 Yannis from uh, Etrick is uh, is really leading this um, effort as well, and uh, we'll be contacting people in these organizations and. Um, hopefully, give um, the community a clear picture of um, um, you know, um, the, the current activities and the, um, the product um, going forward as well. Hopefully, all the, the publish uh, all the results will be published on the foundation website and um, uh, will be centralized. Um, 
I think that's pretty much the, the case. Um, so what we really uh, want is actually for the wider community is we, we're hoping to, to get more people um, involved in, in these activities. Um, um, we, we would like to get community feedback in terms of uh, you know the current working group. Uh, what we are doing, working on right now, and if you can, um, you know, do uh, what your thoughts are, and also whether you can chip in. Um, we're also we're also kind of short on content, so more uh, the more content you can provide in any of these different working groups, um, that would be terrific. Um, the ongoing calls is weekly, and please contact me or, or Kevin for you know, participation. I think that's it. Great. Thank you, Sherry. And our, our next uh, working group call will be Tuesday, January 6th. And I think we're scheduled to uh, come together and, and work with, with Sherry on the presentation that she'll make at the board meeting on, on January 20. Thank you, Sherry. Um, moving along. Um, um, We'll now uh, move to um, uh, community updates, but before we do that, we haven't had a chance today to hear from the, the content committee, um, and um, uh, Julie Bryant had uh, provided some information last month, and so if you're interested in seeing the activities um, uh, of the content committee, uh, please take a look at um, last month's, uh, the November uh, 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 community meeting uh, presentation. So, Jay, why don't we turn it back over to you to give us an update on what is going on in eTrix. Sure, thanks, Kevin. So, uh, I know we're running out of time here, so I'm just going to be trying to be as quick as possible. So, I think first and foremost, the most important thing is eTrix is using Transmart version 1.2. And I don't know if we were the first uh, to do that, but I think it's really, really worthwhile mentioning. Uh, and that's for our public server, as well as for two major projects that are hosted uh, uh, entirely with the eTrix uh, process, which um, means the hosting is done at the CNRS, which is the National Center for Scientific Research uh, in, in France. And uh, they're one of the eTrix partners. So this is great news, and uh, you know, recognize um, uh, Punk Bay Lu, Serge Ifes, and Natalie Julian, and probably a lot of other people who I don't really know, contrib who, I, who I may not know actually contributed to this because I knew that we were going to do it, and basically I got an email uh, when I kind of checked them and said, oh, it's already done. So uh, it didn't appear that this, uh, that, that the migration to 1.2, and in this case, uh, new 1.2 instances were created and the data was reloaded uh, for, uh, for these instances. But it seemed to go pretty, pretty seamlessly, and if, there, if there's someone on the call from eTrix who's got a little more information, I'm more than happy to, uh, to share the, the slide with you. But you know, I almost want to uh, just leave it there, that that's the most important thing that's, that's happened with eTrix with respect to the foundation. I think uh, I just want to remind everyone that eTrix is about midway through the program, so we're about two and a half years in. Uh, we are pending a two-year re review, which is uh, pertinent to all IMI programs. And as part of that, we have to just you know tell the IMI committee and our reviewers where where we are and where we want to go over the next two and a half years. And where we want to go is is really um, up to up for some discussion. So we've kind of proposed that we might split eTrix into what's formerly a research group and an operations group. The operations kind of continuing on with supporting our client programs uh, with Transmart and our, and our information services. And research looking at uh, doing various things, including analytics and additional platform development, uh, particularly around knowledge management uh, solutions. So it's somewhat stay tuned for that, uh, because there will certainly be a uh, uh, a, a natural association with uh, what we would do, want to do with platform development, of course, with the foundation. And uh, 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 Yanni uh, Pan, uh, Pandis, uh, who's at Imperial College and, and a key key member of Atrix, is 
uh, putting together and assembling requirements, our uh, EATRIX requirements for uh, the next round of Transmart development. And I think they're actually going to end up being used as the core for uh, the requirements. And Sherry, I can't remember if you mentioned that or not. But yes. uh, in a nutshell, we Etrix is. Oh, sorry. Oh, I just. Uh, but Etrix is. Uh, okay, thanks. Nice. So Etrix is um, uh, moving forward, and we're on 1.2, and um, you know we'll 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 continue to have the close relationship that we do with the foundation. So I guess I'll, I'll leave it there, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And one of the things that we're doing to try and enhance uh, communication across the community is to each month highlight uh, one or more initiatives like eTrix, like TRAIT, and, and some of the other, other activities that are going on in the U.S., in Europe, and other parts um, of the world. Uh, Jan Willem from the Trade Initiative has uh, already volunteered to present at our January community meeting, and I would encourage those who are on the call that if they know of other interesting projects that it would be worthwhile to share um, on these monthly calls and, and make available to the community at large, please uh, let me know and we'll work to um, include that in uh, future monthly calls. Moving on, uh, our last part of today's call is a review of the 2015 calendar. Rudy Potent Zone will do that uh, on behalf of the foundation and then we'll open things up for questions and dialogue. Rudy? Thanks, Kevin. Um, we'll do this very quickly. Uh, we, uh, we, we mentioned some of these already. Uh, the calendar is filling up. I'll just put a commercial that the website does have. Uh, almost all of these activities in there already, and by the end of the week, we'll have every single thing here. Uh, the board of directors meets once a quarter when the dates are posted. Uh, these community calls are the third Tuesday of each month, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll, you'll join us throughout the 2015. Uh, one note on next, uh, next month, it's going to be the fourth Tuesday, so uh, pay attention. Um, this year, in 2015, we're going to be our, having our first exhibit booth. And so we will be exhibiting at the Molecular Tri Conference, Molecular Medicine Tri Conference in San Francisco. If you're attending, please just stop by and say hello. And uh, also, we will have a booth at BioIT World. Uh, BioIT World will be a big event for us. We will have also a community meeting one of the evenings, as we did uh, this year. Uh, there will be a pre at least one presentation uh, by the foundation, and I'm sure there will be other activities uh, as this uh, unfolds. So please, if you're going to BioIT World, uh, pay attention, and we will be there and uh, have some movements uh, going for us. And then we're also working on our foundation annual meeting, uh, which will take place uh, presumably in October, uh, second or third week. Uh, and we're working on a couple of uh, ideas for venues in Europe um, where we will be uh, conducting the meeting. Next slide. Uh, we are uh, we're all paying attention to other conferences. There are about a million other conferences that we could uh, think about. Uh, I know already that Keith is speaking at the World Congress on uh, Controversies in Neurology uh, and in Budapest. Uh, and uh, two other uh, conferences we are tracking and may participate in are the Alzheimer's Conference and the Brain Informatics and Health Conference. Um, but I ask you to please, if you're attending a conference, and especially if you're speaking about or will be using Transmart in your, your talk, please let me know. We'd love to put it up on here uh, so that uh, any of us who are at these conferences, we can uh, uh, visit and, and attend your talk. And if we're thinking about what conferences we want to go to, uh, these might be some of the ones that, that we want to go. So if you want me to add things here, please let me know. And then finally, I uh, called the thons. We've got a, a bug fix a thon and the data thon already scheduled. Uh, I'm sure there will be a couple of hackathons coming uh, during the year as well. And again, We'll keep you posted uh, on all these. But uh, again, you know the website. We're we're working hard to keep this up to date, and so you can go there. I've, I've changed a little bit some of the format so that you can actually get a calendar view if you go off to the side and look at the, um, you know how uh, the uh, view as uh, you can see this in the calendar view and actually go month by month and see what's uh, what's going on. So that's it. And uh, please visit the website. 
Thank you, Rudy. So we'll go ahead now and uh, use what time we have left uh, to, to answer questions or to provide you with an opportunity to uh, make uh, comments to, to those who are on the call today. We've had um, a, a series of, of questions that have, have already been asked through the question window. We'll review those very quickly. First question is, will the deck from today's meeting be published or sent to attendees? The answer is yes. The slides and the recording um, of, of this meeting will be made available through the Foundation website at www.transmartfoundation.org. We have a, a long collection of, of monthly calls already recorded and available through the website. Uh, next question is, um, how can I get my email address added to the email blast group? Uh, you can send your request to Rudy Potenzone at transmartfoundation.org, or there is a Contact Us button on the Foundation website. Either of those will get you um, on, on the email blast and the other uh, communication channels that uh, Rudy manages. We also had uh, a comment uh, about social media, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, how are they being used? Uh, what should our focus be? And uh, uh, the foundation is already using LinkedIn and Twitter as a mechanism to communicate information out to our community at large. That's all coordinated and managed by uh, Rudy. And so, Rudy, why don't you go ahead and um, um, make any additional uh, comments you think are appropriate. Sure. Um, what we find is that some people tend to prefer one or the other of these, and so rather than focusing on one, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to just you know try to use them all. So when something interesting appears on a tweet somewhere, it's easy enough to, to reference it or retweet it or something. So what I've been doing is trying to keep you know any any especially any news items of interest to, to, to at large both on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, we are adding actually Facebook because there are some folks who seem to like Facebook better. And so, you know, my, my, my sense right now is that we're just going to continue to push all of these. But, but we need participation. You know, we've, we've got a lot more activity on Twitter, but we've got a lot more members in our group on LinkedIn. And so, you know, these are, are open for all of you to, to jump in and talk about interesting stuff. And so I just encourage you all to, um, you know, use these uh, if you want to have any discussions or point out things of interest um, and then, you know, we watch these and then we try to reflect them from the foundation, you know, to the other sites uh, as the interest warrants. Thank you, Rudy. So let's go ahead. If, if you have a question or a comment that you would like to make, uh, please raise your hand um, on the GoToWebinar and we'll um, unmute you so you can uh, make your comment or, or pose your question. Hey, Kevin, I just noticed that uh, Ms. Gill, uh, Chairman of the Board, is on the line. Do you want to ask him if he'd like to make any comments? Sure, we'll unmute uh, Gill. Gill, you should, uh, should be able to speak. Okay, well, I really appreciate the reports from the various groups that are active. A tremendous amount of activity in the uh, Transmark community and the three or now four committees. Um, we have a lot to do, and we especially, as I think Sherry emphasized, need to gain access to a lot more content so that people can actually start to use these data sets and the analytics that are available on our platforms to um, make some new discoveries. I mean, that'll be the uh, intermediate term assessment of how useful Transmart really becomes. So I'm really keen to see that develop, and I know many others are as well. Thank you all for your efforts, and happy holidays, happy new year. Make sure that we get these dates down for the uh, bio-IT world in April. Those are set, and we'll be looking to make a decision on the date and place in Europe for October. Thank you, Kevin and Keith. Thanks, Gil. Thanks, Gil. So uh, Ward from the Hive uh, just posed uh, an additional question that I think most of us w would have a keen interest in, and that is when is the version 1.2 manual being released? Will this also include the online manual reference from every analysis in Transmart? And, and then he uh, gives an example um, URL. So um, 
Uh, Rudy, um, I know you've been uh, sort of shepherding that effort to develop the version 1.2 documentation and training materials. So uh, I would I would like to ask if you could just give us a brief update. Yeah, I mean we're we're making progress. It's it's taken a lot of time to to get you know gather the information from the the folks. Um, uh, it will both be online. Uh, we'll be updating the help messages that are embedded in the code, as well as have an online manual and um, uh, potentially printed materials. Although I haven't really thought about that so much. But uh, this, you know, we're 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 going to you know really have a, a hard push and, and have some things you know uh, already in January. But um, it, it it has been sort of hard going, and uh, I apologize for taking so long. Thank you, Rudy. Um, any any other questions or comments? We we are at the end of our our, our time, but uh, we're happy to continue if if there's a comment you would like to make or a question that you would like to have answered. If so, uh, please please raise your hand uh, in in the uh, or, or or pose a question in in the question box. Okay, um, Keith. Uh, you, um, why don't we give you the opportunity to make any closing remarks, and then we'll bring uh, this call to a close. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Kevin. That, <clears throat> I think we went a little bit long today. Sorry about that. We try to get these uh, these meetings done in, in the time allotted. But I want to thank everyone for your attention. Um, like I said, it's been a, it's been a busy month. There's a lot of a uh, lot of work to get done by the year end. A few things that we need to pick up and make sure that we're pushing forward, like the documentation and, and getting those deliverables in place. I um, want to wish everyone a happy holiday. I hope everyone has a, a great and uh, successful holiday season, a uh, fantastic new year, and uh, we will see you uh, in January. Kevin, did you mention that the, the call for January is, uh, is slightly different than expected? Yes, and uh, Rudy just covered that. So for January, okay. the monthly call will be the fourth Tuesday of January uh, on January 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern and we'll make sure to communicate that out well in advance so that uh, there isn't any misunderstanding um, as to when the call is being held. Fantastic. So uh, <clears throat> that's to accommodate the board meeting, which will be taking place during uh, the time of the call. But again, thanks, everyone. Uh, looking forward to a, a fantastic 2015. I appreciate all the effort uh, the community has, has given towards the platform and towards the foundation over the past year. And I wish you all a happy new year. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.